school production of A Midsummer Night's Dream, Jonathan Silverman landed the lead in Neil Simon's Brighton Beach memoirs. Oh, my God. Sorry, Gene. I didn't see you. Hello, Mr. Murphy. My mother's going to kill me. It's a deposit box. It wasn't your fault. She doesn't care. She'll charge me for my own dessert tonight. I should have seen you coming. How much is the deposit? Three cents. Here, here. Here's a dime. Dime? I'm a sports fan, and that was a Brighton great Beach time. memoirs on you, Encore. Encore's primetime forecast. Tonight, Walter Matthau and Elaine May turn over a new leaf. Monday, Paul Newman fights for his reputation in Absence of Malice. Tuesday, Clark Gable woos Doris Day in That Touch of Mink. Wednesday, Jackie Gleason and Steve McQueen star in Soldier in the Rain. Thursday, Terrence Stamp stars in The Collector. Friday, Burt Reynolds stars in Impasse. Saturday, Peter Sellers and Peter O'Toole star in What's New Pussycat. See the hit movies of the 60s, 70s, and 80s only on Encore. Mark DiCarlo, this is Encore, and our next offering is a satirically brilliant and harrowing film, one of the most controversial works ever, especially coming out of the early 70s. It's Stanley Kubrick's futuristic nightmare vision entitled A Clockwork Orange. Written by Kubrick from the best-selling novel by Anthony Burgess, the film centers on Alex, the leader of a gang of droogs, violently amoral hedonists who speak in a strange primitive slang. The gang's nightly sprees of drug-addled sadism have driven the older generation behind locked doors, and when Alex is finally apprehended, he must submit to an experimental psychotherapy program which brainwashes him into a conditioned physical revulsion at violence in all forms that may or may not turn out to be a change for the better. Sounds so unlike our society today, don't you think? Forced to film under the uh, constraints of a very small budget, Kubrick shot a clockwork orange using no sound stages and specially constructing only two sets. Despite these budgetary limitations, Kubrick impressively conveys a bleak vision of tomorrow's world, which of course is today's world, with its uh, concert halls abandoned and decaying Greek-like ruins vandalized by the bloodthirsty gangs. Originally released under an X rating, the positive reviews and strong initial business convinced Kubrick that if he wanted to reach a broader audience, he needed to remove the stigma of that extreme rating. So he and Warner Brothers decided to pull the film from release for 60 days while he trimmed 30 seconds of explicit sexual footage from the picture. Although Clockwork Orange still uh, retained all of its scenes of graphic violence, the recut film gained a new rating of R, freeing up a wider national distribution for the film. The winner of a number of international awards, including the 1971 Hugo Award as Best Science Fiction Picture and Best Picture at the prestigious Venice Film Festival, A Clockwork Orange boasts an outstanding cast of largely British actors headed up by the incredible Malcolm McDowell as Alex, the vicious London hood with a bizarre taste for classical music. Nominated for four Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Adapted Screenplay, A Clockwork Orange still stands as a classic of modern filmmaking a violently brooding piece of future shock which alternatively horrifies and dazzles us with its utterly unique cinematic approach. A Clockwork Orange is certainly not for the squeamish, but it is one of the most thought-provoking and uncompromising films ever made. <laughs> Clockwork Orange is a great drama. In fact, here at Encore, we've launched a whole new channel that will play only true stories and drama 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you want more information on Encore's new true stories and drama channel, Call your cable operator. But right now, stay tuned. Here's A Clockwork Orange. It's rated R. Watch it. The following feature is rated R. <laughs> 